welcome. I'm Coach Tanya here at Critical Bench. And in this exercise, I'm going to be showing you a series of balance exercises that are designed to help prevent falls. Now, it might be that you've had an injury. Maybe you're not as active as you used to be. Maybe you're getting a little older and you just find your balance isn't as good as it was. And that fear of falling is something that you think more about than you used to. So these exercises are all ones you can do right at home to help support better balance and help to improve your current balance. So to start with, all you're going to need is a chair. Okay, so make sure you have that. You're going to need a clutter-free area. Now, I'm going to demonstrate these exercises. We're going to do a couple together, and then I'd like you to rewind the video and do them through again, watching me by yourself. This first exercise is a simple sit to stand. So you want to get a really good solid chair on a nice solid surface, and we do want to come a little bit to the edge. You don't want to be relaxed and leaning back. So sitting tall, straight back, chin parallel to the ground. You can have your knees, um, sorry, your hands on your knees. Um, try not to push up, okay? We want to work at doing this without that support. If you need to for the first couple of reps, that's fine though. So basically going from sitting, you're just going to bring yourself up to standing and then lower back down to sitting again. And we want to do that eight times, but let's do four together. Coming up, nice and slow. Now, if you find that you're a bit wobbly, you might need to widen your stance a little bit, which is absolutely fine. Coming up again, you're using some core muscles, so that's gonna help bring some strength there. Lower down, it's a controlled sit. Don't fall back into your seat. Stay straight, let's do one more. Okay, just like that. So that is your basic sit to stand onto the next exercise. This next exercise is called a single leg stand. So you want to have your chair beside you for support. We're not leaning on the chair because doing that right there just offsets your balance. So it really is counterintuitive to what we're trying to achieve here. So you want to stand feet maybe about shoulder width apart. A lot of times the closer we bring our base, that can actually make our balance, make us feel more wobbly. So let's widen the base a bit to about shoulder feet apart. Now this is not a height raising exercise. It really doesn't matter how high you bring your knee up, just that you bring it up and you are, fo you are focusing all your body weight on one leg. So with your hand on the chair for support, you might have to move away a little bit, okay? Just bring one knee, up. actually I'm gonna start with the inside leg. Let's bring one knee up and just hold it there for maybe five, four, three, two and one and we're going to do all the same legs so when you do the eight repetitions do them all on one leg before switching to the other okay let's do a few more hold that core nice and tight as well that's going to help with your balance let's do two more of these five four three two one do one more and again if this is as high as you can lift your knee, that's fine. If bringing your knee right up makes you wobbly and lose your balance, don't, don't do that then. Just lift it off the floor for five, four, three, two, one. Let's do a couple on the other leg. So lifting that knee up for five, four, three, two, and one. Set it down, brief pause, catch your breath. Do that again. Good, let's do one more. Five. Let's do one more. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, again, when you're running through these again, make sure you're doing eight on one leg and then switching and doing eight on the other leg. Let's get ready for the next exercise. For the next exercise, you are gonna need something to tap your foot on. So I just grabbed a few things that I found here in the office and in the kitchen that I thought might be items you are more likely or you might have at home, but basically anything that just stands about a foot off the floor. So you might have, um, a pillow, a Kleenex box, a large container or can of soup or beans or something, a yoga block, any of those things will work, an upside down trash can. So find something that you can use to set on the floor that you can tap your foot on because you are going to need it for this, this next exercise. So these are called foot taps and whatever it is you're working with or that you chose to tap your foot on, you wanna place it not directly under the chair but kind of in line with the back of the chair. I grabbed the yoga block, so we're gonna face the chair both hands just touching it for support. And with one leg again, because everything's eight repetitions per leg, you're just going to tap your foot and bring it back down to the floor. And tap it like that, and bring it down to the floor. And you're gonna do that eight times, then you're gonna switch to the other leg, 
And what you might find is that, you know, one side you, you feel more balanced than the other side. That's okay. That's why we do these exercises to improve balance all around, okay? So eight on one leg, eight on the other. Really simple, but really great because we're shifting our body weight from one leg to the other while being supported so it's good and safe. Okay, for the three-way hip kicks, same thing. Rest your hand on the chair for support. This is not about how high you lift your leg off the floor, so don't worry about that. If lifting it this much is all you're comfortable doing and that helps you with your balance, then do that. And as you get stronger, as you find, as you find that your balance improves, you might want to try lifting your leg a little higher. But remember, that's not the ultimate goal of these exercises. So you're going to do eight per side. Again, I'm just going to keep repeating that for you. But let's do a couple together so you get an idea of how this feels. So you're just going to bring one leg out in front, then back to the center, then out to the side, back to the center, behind you, back to the center. So that's one, okay? So you do that again, to the side, to the back, that's two. Now I'm running through these a little quickly because I'm demonstrating them for you, but remember to take all the time that you need. I don't know where you're at in your journey as far as if you have an injury, if you're not feeling well, um, your, if your eyesight causes implications or impacts your balance. So you go at your pace, okay? This isn't a t uh, race. Let's do another one. One to the front, the side, and to the back. Okay, and when you've completed eight on one leg, you want to bring the chair around and you want to do the same thing out to the front, to the side, and to the back. And again, to the side and behind you. Again, taking the time that you need. We're not going to worry about how high we lift that leg. Just focus on holding our balance, keeping our core nice and tight. Remember to breathe. If you find that you start leaning on the chair, then just stop and reset. You're either getting tired or this just might be an exercise that is a little more challenging and you might want to skip it and go on to the next one. Let's do one more though together. And to the back. Okay, so that is your three-way hip kicks. On to the next one. So this exercise is mini lunges. It's actually a lot of fun. So you're going to face your chair, both hands resting on the chair. Now you might want to come, depending on how big the chair is that you're using, because this I, I don't know what you're using at home. Mine isn't overly wide, so I can I could actually stand right dead center behind my chair. But you might want to come a little bit to the edge. It might help make this just a little easier for you, because it might feel a little awkward at first. But all you're going to do is take a step to the outward side of the chair and just bend your knee and lunge and then come back. And that actually might feel really good because you're going to get a nice stretch in there as well. We're going to do that again. Lunge, coming back. It's kind of forcing us to move in a diagonal position off a centered base while supporting ourselves. So this is a great balance exercise for you. Okay, again, going at your pace. Let's do one more. All right, so we just, I think we did three or four, but when you actually do this full through, you want to do eight. So let's switch. I'm going to show you what it looks like on the other side, which is, it looks the same, but <laughs> again, just step and lunge. You might find one side is a little tighter. So just be aware of a notice how different if at all the exercises feel doing them from one leg to the other, because a lot of times our balance becomes more challenging or compromised because of muscle imbalances and that can be due to an injury or tightness on one side in a joint and that is going to make it more difficult to be balanced with simple things like walking or going upstairs. So just be aware of that and notice those things as you're moving through these exercises. All right, good job. Let's get ready for the next exercise. Now this exercise is called the lateral side step. And actually, it's very similar to the lunges that we just did, but we're just moving in a different plane of motion. The mini lunges we just did had us moving kind of in a forward diagonal um, plane of, of motion. This, this time we're going just side to side. Again, you're going to do all eight reps on one side, then switch and do all eight on the other side. We're just going to do a couple here together. Let me show you how this looks. So again, with your chair supporting you, you're just going to step to the side and a slight bend in the knee. You don't have to come right down. That's not what we're doing. We're not working legs and glutes. We're just working balance. So just step out enough so that you can still rest your fingertips on the chair and then come back to center. It might help to have your feet about shoulder width apart. 
just creates a better base to start from. Do that again, sidestep and a little bit of bend in the knee. Coming back, good job. Let's do one more. Okay, excellent. So we've done some on the right. Switch the chair around to do them on the left. Stepping out. You might have to come a little bit closer to your chair so you can keep your hands. I've got these really long monkey arms, so <laughs> side. And side. Now I'm going to show you one variation. If you do have shorter arms or if you're finding it hard to keep your hand on the back of the chair, you can always bring the chair in front of you. Now I know you can't really see my legs that well, but since I've showed you what the exercise looks like, you've got that locked and loaded. If this feels better for you, you can keep both hands on the back of the chair, step to one side and bend, okay, and continue all eight for one side. And then when you've completed eight, move on to the other side and do your eight on the other leg. So that's two ways for you to do that, okay? Good work. Okay, so I've had you moving using one leg in, one, in you know, different planes of motion. So now we're just gonna get some up and down movement going, but using both legs as support. So these are just a simple squat. Now you don't have to worry, this is not the kind of squat where I'm concerned with how low you get to the ground. This is just some slight bending in your knees and just helping to um, promote and support really good two foot balance, okay? So like your stable base. So your feet about shoulder width apart. Now I've got really long legs, so for me it's just a lot easier to do it with my feet about 45 degree angled outwards, okay? You can do it with your toes pointed forward. You just might find this a little easier. You do what's comfortable for you. Both hands resting on the chair for support and you just lower down and come up. Now when you come up to the top, really squeeze your booty, okay? And keep that core tight. That's all gonna help. That's helping to build some strength and keep those muscles strong. And we need a really strong posterior chain, so strong glutes, strong legs, strong core to help support really good balance. So these are all really important to do. You keep that core tight as you come down, keeping it tight as you come up. When you get to the top, squeeze that booty, okay? You got it. Let's do a couple more. Down, coming up. And up, let's just do one more. Okay, so eight of those, and squeeze your glutes. Now for heel raises, I wanna make sure you really understand you don't have to go as high up onto your tippy toes as you possibly can. Now, especially if you are really struggling with your balance, this is not about how high you can get up off the floor, but it is, the exercise is um, meant to help you get, you know, helped again to support balance, improve balance by raising your heels off the floor and focusing your body weight on the balls of your feet. So don't worry about how high you get, just focus Focus on lifting those heels and feeling out where your balance is still really good and where you start to wobble a little bit, all right? So facing your chair, again, fingertips, hands resting, we're not leaning. If you're at this point and you feel like you're leaning, you're probably tired, take a break. You can either come back tomorrow and do the rest of these or come back in an hour, whatever works for you. So hands resting on the back of the chair, feet about shoulder width apart. That's just gonna create a stronger, more stable base to start from. You, again, if we narrow the base, we're, we're balancing on a smaller area than if we widen our base. So let's widen the base, about shoulder width, and we're just gonna slowly roll up, lifting the heels off the floor. Now, um, you can see my heels, I could, go up high if I wanted to, but that's not the purpose. If this is all you, if you start to come forward and you just get your heels off the floor and you start to wobble, stop. This is where, this is where you start from, okay? And you will work up from there. So you wanna hold that for three, two, one. Come back down, let's go up again. Three, two, and one. As you develop better balance, you wanna challenge yourself to come up a little higher. So let's try that. Three, two, one. Come down slowly, pause. Let's do that one more time. Three, two, one, and rest. Beautiful, okay, one more exercise to show you. Okay, this last exercise I wanna show you is really a lot of fun, and I want you to take your time with it and go as slowly as you need to, and enjoy it, because it is, it's, it's a fun exercise. And it also has us moving across the midline of the body, so it has us moving from this side to that side. And that is really good. Exercises that have you crossing the midline of the body are really great to help support and improve your balance. So what I did was I grabbed that yoga block that I used for the foot taps. Now, depending
depending on what you used, you might be able to use that same object, but you also might, might want to grab something a little smaller or a little lighter. So if you have, again, a Kleenex box or a pillow, something that's light and easy for you to grab and pick up, choose that, all right? So we have our chair to one side of us. We have the object we're gonna be moving on the other side. So to start with, I'm gonna be moving from my left side to my right side. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend down and pick this up. And you might have to, I should probably have it a little closer. Don't make it too hard, have things so far away that you fall over trying to pick them up. We don't want that. So I'm just gonna bend down and pick this up and I'm gonna put it on the chair. Then I'm gonna take it off the chair and put it back down in front of me. That's one time. Now, you have to do that eight times, but I'll do a few more with you, okay? So you can watch me and get a feel for it because it is kind of fun. So you pick it up, put it on the chair, pick it up, and put it on the floor. That would be two. <laughs> One more time on this side, okay? Bend those knees, pick it up, and put it on the floor. Now it's very important, after you've done those eight, you really wanna make sure you don't skip the part where we do this on the other side, because this is going to, um, if you haven't, if you're starting to notice that your, your belt pardon me, your balance is a little stronger one side over the other. This is definitely going to point it out. You're going to notice um, how stable you are moving from right to left versus left to right. Now, if you do find that doing this exercise in one direction versus the other is a little harder, slow it down, maybe start with five reps but gradually build yourself up to those eight reps as you get more stable, more confident, and stronger, okay? So let's bend down and pick up our object, put it on the chair, don't like it there, we're gonna pick it up and put it on the floor. And that's one rep, let's do that again. Pick it up, put it on the chair, off the chair, and put it down, just like that. One more. And we'll bring it back. Great, and you want to do that eight times. Now what I found myself, not that my balance felt different, but I noticed I have a lot of tightness in my left side, so when it actually came as, as small and tiny as that movement was, putting that object on the chair, I could feel that tightness in my hip versus the other side. So again, be really aware of what you're feeling in your body when you're moving through these exercises, and then start to notice those improvements as you do these more regularly. Okay, excellent job. And I'm really excited to hear back from you, because I'm hoping you're gonna comment, as to how, you know, how did you enjoy those exercises and how much improvement you start seeing after doing these regularly. Again, there's no right or wrong time when to do them. The only wrong thing would be to not do them at all, especially if you, f if you find that you're struggling with your balance. So if you wanna do these once a day, or if you wanna split them up and do half, you know, earlier in the day, half later in the day, do that. But two times a day if you can, there's nothing wrong with that. I do recommend two to three times a week, just make this part of your healthy living and your fitness regime. You're going to notice some improvements. And thank you so much for joining me. Now, if you do find that you're having issues with your balance and you want more exercises like these that are really going to boost and bump up and um, improve your balance, I want you to check that pinned comment below. This is a new program developed by our very own coach, Chris Wilson, and it's the Neuro Balance Therapy Program. Program. It's absolutely amazing. You get the digital download, you get the DVD, and you get the spiky ball for free that comes with it. So you can work through all of those programs from very beginner to intermediate to advanced. Check that pink comment below. It's gonna take you to a page. You can read all about it and all the testimonials from those who are already using the program and who have found massive improvements in their balance and their overall quality of life. I'm Coach Tanya. Thank you for joining me. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to click that subscription button and that notification bell so you never miss any of our great video content. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,